Panel It's Podcast. Pierre and Kyle. That's right. Woo! All right. What are we talking about today? I don't know why you brought me here. All right. Then you know what? I'm going to tell you. How about that? All right. So first, we're going to do some news. Then we're going to talk about a Batman book that we read. And then we're going to close with an insane clickbait, never heard before rumor of all rumors. I'll only tell you if you're good because it's not in the notes. It's a secret. Ooh. So if you're bad behavior, no one gets to find out and everyone will know it's your fault. I'm going to be a good boy. Why don't you start us up? What are we talking about first? The ultimate comic line is returning and Jonathan Hickman might be involved. And the maker and Miles Morales are the key characters that the story is following. Stop. That's all I got for you. I mean, obviously, Ultimates is like a favorite of all of us mm -hmm. at Panelist Podcast. So anything relating back to that universe, especially when it's the two coolest characters from that universe. I did scoop up the first appearance of the maker. So I just figured eventually Reed Richards will go crazy. I expect that to be a thing maybe in the movies at some point. It's just too good of a storyline not to like pull from. And they pulled already so much from the Ultimate Universe. True. Why not? I mean, the technical first appearance of the maker is Mr. Fantastic's first appearance. But you're saying the first time he called himself the maker? Mm -hmm. I like your thought process. I'm not looking to pull much from it. It'll pull a little bit. Yeah, no. Yeah. Good speculation. All right, next. Thunderbolts, the movie, has added Glenn from The Walking Dead, Stephen Yoon, and the rumor, kind of confirmed by an untrustworthy website, so far at least, he's Sentry. Nah. My only thing with that is he's not like a bulky dude, and he already voices Invincible, and it's a similar power set. It's not my first choice for him, and I'm afraid that with Sentry, it's just going to be a villain that isn't going to be recurring, and I would have loved him to be a recurring character, not a villain that probably would only be in one movie, you know? I can't see him as Sentry at all. I can see him in the Thunderbolts team, maybe as another character, but I don't see him as a villain. So Warner Brothers is going to be making Lord of the Rings movies. Now you say to yourself, wait a second, Rings of Power was on Amazon Prime. But it sounds like they're going to compete with each other and not be canon to each other. So that's stupid and mildly bothersome. So before we get to the bulk of the episode, I do want to talk about Mandalorian for a second. I didn't watch the new episode. The director confirmed that Grogu was actually with Luke for a few years. And the space between episodes, depending on the arc, years are passing. So this is way more progressed than we thought. And being that more time is going on and there's holes in between and the fact that it was just announced that there's no end in sight for this, that whole theory of this could be redoing the sequel trilogy might be more and more true because if they're progressing time that far, they might do a whole new perspective of the new empire. That'd be interesting. I can see them making that like a different universe and somehow pulling in multiverses into this too. cop out for everyone now. <laughs> I mean, that would just not be Star Wars style, but it's not a possible especially like i don't know if you heard like i am legend that's what they're basing the sequel off of alternate endings so it's not impossible but then in the same sentence maybe they'll bring back ray if time's moving that fast they might catch up and surpass those movies that ray could have a pivotal role in the upcoming season and it would be after she's already a jedi i don't know why people hated those movies that hard like they weren't really that bad you were not the person <laughs> to be saying that well listen hear me out they weren't that good to begin with if you go back and watch the other star wars movies right. they're not that great the prequels weren't that great the originals yeah. were great for their time the newest trilogy was arguably only good because of the budget the story itself was not so great yeah to prove my point real quick before we go to our next topic tell me the last nerd movie that you didn't give a 10 black See? widow okay but that was like a three so bad it was pretty it bad. was so bad it hurts so did you see my text message where I said, I'm excited about the sidekick and I can't wait to show it to you? I did. And I was confused. Mm -hmm. I honestly thought it was a typo because you do do that mm -hmm. a lot. I just thought Fair. that you might have meant something else like side gig. You do things on the side. Sidekick could have also been referring to the old T-Mobile device. Oh, mm. okay. So that's a sidekick. So this is a sidekick. So I know <laughs> that you don't have as many books as I do, but when you have 15 short boxes and you're stacking them and you're moving them and you don't have much space and you're digging through them, sometimes the comics in the box, they tip over. When they tip over, things go bad. You get color breaks, you get spine cracks, you get a whole bunch of unfavorable damage. This product right here stops that. You clip it on inside the box. It looks like a typical divider, but this little clip holds everything in place and stops your books from tipping. Sidekicksupplies.com. Right now, it is 15% off. Thanks15 is the code. You add that code, you get 15% off. There's free shipping. The product is made in the USA. And if you're a comic shop, they do wholesale. So you can get these rather cheap and sell them in your store. I have a box I can actually use that for. All the comic books are actually tilted. I thought that was like a normal thing. Now to the main topic. You read a book, and I'm proud of you because you've been a little dry lately. You haven't been reading a as few much. books. First 
saw. And I know this because you haven't picked up any of my comics, meaning you're not buying comics. Meaning you're only any. taking advantage of my subscriptions that I pay for. And that's the only way you're reading. And you mess up my progress so I know when you read. And my progress hasn't been messed up until recently. So why don't you tell us what we both read? Mm, so Lazarus Planet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you wanted me to say it because you have trouble saying the word. Talk about the elephant in the room. I think it would have taken you a few times to say that word. Yes, and we read them. <laughs> <laughs> we read huh. the tie-ins. We read Batman versus Robin, which is what instigated the event. We didn't read all of it because, again, we're using an app, so it's about a month behind. But we read a nice chunk. First of all, I want to say, I think Mark Wade is doing a fantastic job on this story. I think I kind of was telling you this yesterday. There is a lot of stuff going on in DC with Bat Family stuff. They're just all over the place and the fact that mark wade is making all of this work with everything else going on in the background you got to give him credit for that so first why don't you give a little synopsis of what the hell for anyone who didn't listen and doesn't feel like reading it. story picks up batman versus robin four issues of kind of explaining the story and where we're at setting up the event damien robin gets possessed by devil nesh nesha 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 Nez, Nezha. It's confusing. There's a Z and an H, and I'm sure Jeremiah knows how to say it, but maybe not because he also didn't know how to say no more. So from what I'm getting from it, I think, is mm -hmm. that the devil, Nezha, and whatever this Lazar pit is doing releases whatever, like, the most... I don't know how to explain it. Fuck, you explain it. The reason why you secretly hate people, you know? Yes. Your suppressed trauma caused by that person. Yeah. So, like, when you make the intro of Paneloid's podcast take 15 minutes because you won't say your name, that mm -hmm. would be mm -hmm. what I tried to murder you for yeah and robin goes around he's just pissed yeah. and alfred's dead so he's pissed about that too that happened a while ago but it's like still surfacing which makes sense which is weird at first because alfred's walking around and he's still around with batman spoiler you don't find out until later that it's not him a sprinkle of his dna was the required feelings. to have the villain portray alfred so like there's a little bit of him there so again this is massive spoilers but i think it was issue four when you kind of realize that alfred is an Alfred when he's dissolving away back to death he kind of has some nice words for Batman and that's supposedly actually him or the fragment of him that was there now we're dealing with magic so it's a thing I guess it's cool and it was really cool that Batman admitted that he knew the whole time it was an Alfred and just played along no I forgot about that actually yeah so Batman knew of course detective world's mm -hmm. best detective knows even that so he played along to get him where he needed him to so that worked out and then he has to go through trials uh, against all the Robins not all of them but the four unoccupied ones that so, weren't doing something else in their stories. But at least it was true to the fact that they had held the Robin name. Yeah. They had Stephanie Brown. So it wasn't just like, oh, here's just the four that were available. They were Robins. And they also let their hatred come out of, you traumatized me. You're the reason I'm a screwed up adult. Yeah, he seems That's... to go through that a lot. We hear it so much that I'm starting to believe it. Batman's a villain. Yeah. I'm Child abuse. feel a little way about Batman. <laughs> but he fights them all. He beats them down while they're upset. Yeah, he messes them up pretty bad too. Their emotions. It's funny because as he's fighting them, they're telling him, you know, how he messed them up. And he's telling them, no, this is all your fault, basically. <laughs> but as it goes on, he starts to realize, like, okay, wait, maybe, like, it is my fault. He doesn't even fight fair. <laughs> it was cool. I think they did a good job with that. I guess the other villain that we have going along with this is also Raz Al Ghul. Mom. So it's like talia's grandmother and talia is in this and she of course helps damien because she always helps damien but like i don't know it gets a little confusing there because this big red villain devil creature has everyone like possessed or like floating around in some kind of magical world like he's got everyone subdued he knew who the problems were gonna be to mess up his plan and he knew that like using damien would be the way to mess with batman you know basically keep him occupied to get his plan done so like, i think the story is really well written in that way of like this villain wouldn't just be able to do all of this without people like us fans being like oh well this character and this character and where's this person and they would have been involved wade handled all of that everyone mm -hmm. that would have been involved in a threat surrounding all of this was somehow subdued and that's how the villain planned it and it was done well but once you yeah. get talent free and once damien got out of his possession that's when shit did not go the way the villain wanted and then the villain's son shows up spoiler and he's a real prick and he starts fighting everybody and then what happens the lazarus volcano erupts before that i guess they're sucking powers out of people 
They are sucking powers out of people. I mean, I don't really like it when you say they're sucking powers out of people, but yes, through multiple magical characters that I'm not too familiar with, they're taking the magical powers from person A, B, C, and D, and they're pushing them into Dr. Fate's helmet. Black Alice is the character that they're using to move all the different powers. Like, they have one of the original lanterns, they have a smorgasbord, if you will. Supercharging Fate's helmet, which is already super powerful. And then Roz's mother gives mm-hmm. Damien a Batman suit, which I think we've seen before. Yes. In like a times. future Damien, right? I just feel like he looks so stupid on him. Like he's so tiny. Especially when he's a, a child Batman. wearing that suit. Like a little onesie, so it's easier to like pull up and change the diaper. <laughs> like it's just not yeah. cool. I don't love it. I don't people are a fan of it, but I'm not a fan at all. All right, we agree. I think your favorite part was when somehow, which was kind of obvious, the villain is pumping up this fate helmet, obviously for Batman to put it on. What did you think of the fate helmet getting bat ears? Thought it was sick. I thought it was sick, but then I thought about it. How is Batman, a normal human with no magic, able to change the look of the fate helmet? Like, shouldn't the fate helmet have influenced him and he had like a completely different suit? So you don't question it. You know, he just leaves that alone. I was like, oh, watch his suit turn blue and gold. That would have been sick. No, inside the helmet got ears. All right. So they put all these powers and you did all this shit for what? Just for him to be like, take all the powers back. He didn't do anything with it. And then the volcano goes off. I thought like you're about to see like some crazy scene with him using these powers and then the sun shows up which i do believe is our ignorance of not reading other books i think the monkey prince and all those other stories are tying in explaining that these are new characters to me and he just showed up and i was like what the fuck who is this i think it was bull demon or something like that bull devil yeah bull shows up he's a real prick he's also traumatized by his father that's the theme of this it's just traumatized and having some daddy issues and just for everyone listening i mean we're talking about lazarus planet alpha but if you read the other tie-in book they kind of pull everything together i still think there's more before that because if you notice a lot of the edit notes oh yeah no, for sure. pointing to other books we'll get to this more but they also seem to be mentioned this dawn of dc thing at the end very much so as well mm-hmm. but yeah so batman versus robin one through four sets up damien trying to kill batman damien comes out of his possession batman puts on fate helmet the villain gets taken out by him his son this island with the lazarus pits turns into a volcano the volcano turns into a planet covered in lazarus rain literal green rain which is how we start with lazarus planet alpha which is where things start to get like really like everyone is affected by this all of the dc universe is being affected by this rain in one way or another after reading the tie-ins i'm not sure what happened in alpha anymore and what happened in the tie-ins so alpha is really just concentrating more so on damien and how he's fixing the situation with batman that's the main storyline damien started this whole mess and now we're trying to resolve it i also like the fact that they mentioned that superman wasn't involved in this that the devil knew that if you know he went after superman it would have been a different turnout so now i guess we're concentrating more on these characters and how they resolve this but in your other book which you've mentioned our money grabs which i agree what? i never said that how dare yeah, you so. you liar although i did enjoy the stories that were in these books i think a lot of it was just money grab but it gave you an idea of what was going on with these other characters that they don't mention because yeah. as a reader you're like oh well why didn't superman come rescue them you see that each character is kind of going through their own situation with the right. planet being engulfed in the lazarus pit i guess one of the stories that stuck out was uh, i think superboy's story so he's dealing with i guess they're all dealing with like these metahumans that are being created out of the powers and that's really where i want to go with this conversation because i'm kind of feeling like they're using event to make a new metahuman storm and just give a blanket of new characters at their disposal and and whichever ones are popular could stick. Now, of course, picking Mark Wade to helm the main story is brilliant to do this. And again, at the end of every book, they're saying Dawn of DC. And I think that's really it. They're looking to not revamp again, but just find a way to make some new fresh things to get some new number ones out there. There's a lot of new characters with some random ass powers, for sure. They're also setting up some other stories. So like, just to go off on a tangent for a second, like in one of the side stories, Aquaman kind of acknowledges that the trench monsters who he always fights throughout Aquaman's history. He's acknowledging that they're his ancestors. And I think he might have hinted at that before, like a few years ago in an Aquaman book. Like they're kind of going that way with that story. Wonder Mm -hmm. Woman is training somebody's grandma. Like, I don't know who that is, but someone's (laughs) grandma is getting trained by Wonder Woman. (laughs) She's an Amazon now. And it's cool. Like, I don't know the character. She's probably, again, showed up in a prior Wonder Woman book I'm unfamiliar with. Yeah. But while she's fighting her, zombies show up because of the rain. The Lazarus rain brought back everyone that Amazon's ever fought and that's 
setting up a new arc for the Wonder Woman book. So even after this event is done, the rain stops. We're going to walk away with a ton of new characters and we're going to walk away with ongoing story arcs of like, there's still zombies. There's still recurring powers. To go back to the Superman story, John tries to stop somebody that now has what, like lava powers. And in the meantime, he's getting like electric powers. That's like one thing there. But then if you go to like Supergirl's story, her powers aren't even working right. Starting in Alpha, the sun is actually messing up her powers. So it's either like twisting your powers, giving you new powers or giving people who don't have powers powers which is an odd thing for the Lazarus pit because it's really from my knowledge makes you a little crazy but brings you back to life i feel like this is kind of like marvel spider verse where they're introducing like a lot of new characters really quickly through an event especially this last book that came out that we read that one felt very focused on creating a new story that was legends reborn number one that one had like a bunch of stories in it that i felt they have something to give us at the end of all this but i don't think it's going to be something that's easily just rectified like once damien and batman figure out how to fix this whole thing i think like your zombies things like that aren't supposed to be around will be gone so do you think the powers are going to stick around for some like another example power girl can read minds now superman john kent electric powers you know the blue and red superman when they like split and they're kind of evil i think i've even seen a little clip of him in a similar blue suit is he keeping electric powers for a bit yeah i think it's setting up kind of what it's going to be depending on how the audience receives some of these powers and future Mm -hmm books they might use them or they might just like we're just gonna forget about that i guess we'll see so far again those side books felt very heavily like a money grab at the same Mm. time a little bit more important than we realize right now they're really planning something much larger for dc with these characters that they've introduced and the side stories are really short stories there's multiple stories within each book i think my favorite so far was the power girl one just off of the art i like the arc that they're creating with raven i didn't love that's the one thing i gotta say (laughs) this short stories they're like rapid fire and it's hard for me to like remember the last short story i read bunch of new characters bunch of new powers i like the raven arc that they're setting up raven and beast boy find out that there's three demons running around and they go to like handle the situation and she goes in it's three brothers two of them want raven to help and the other one's like get the hell out of here like we'll handle it ourselves and turns out beast boy was her father in disguise Trigon shows up, kills a whole bunch of cops, and then Raven's like, what the hell? And he's like, I'm taking that one. But before he takes the one reluctant demon child, he's like, yeah, you're cool, but your brothers aren't cool. And I'm pretty sure he kills his brothers. And then he names him Trilogy. That was cool. But the story to me was way too short. Like, I wanted a little bit more background on these kids. Yeah. But like you said, the stories are really short stories. Rapid fire is the best way to say it. I'm starting to feel like this comic book was like an important one to pick up. My one complaint is I really always saw the Lazarus Pit as not magic just like some kind of like chemical phenomenon where they found it under gotham and like it brought joker back and batman back but they didn't know who they were like i've seen snyder do cool stuff with it so this is kind of like taking it and like throwing into the magic world so i didn't love that but i do really like the core story of it and most of the side stories are entertaining but some unnecessary i'm gonna keep reading it it definitely is gonna be a big thing i wonder if dawn of dc is gonna be tied to james gunn's universe because he did Mm. mention he wants everything to be uniform i don't think we're gonna see comic canon to movies as a whole we'll get some but i do believe like marvel did when mcu was really starting to grow its popularity the status quo will be identical yeah. which is always scary because it's like every big bold move that the comic industry has made has potential to go away they make a movie they go back to the roots because they believe that's the only thing that people want to see and then they push the comics backwards to match it so that's my one fear with it i don't see them doing it that severely james gunn's not afraid to take some new stuff that's for sure so i did want to just before we wrap this up tell you some anime news and by anime news it's just anime stuff that i've been watching so i started a new show Mm -hmm. re-zero starting a new life in another world from zero all right yeah i'm not gonna watch that one a lot of fan (laughs) service the main character who just showed up in a fantasy world right when he dies which he does often he starts from the beginning so like once he resolves that problem he will then restart from the conclusion of the last problem so he basically has checkpoints Mm. but what kind of makes the show cool is anytime he tries to talk about it some kind of demon creature like squeezes his heart so he's not capable of telling people like hey i'm gonna go kill myself i'll be right back so it kind of adds like a cool twist to the groundhog day scenario but yeah i don't know it's a little bit fan service like there's like twins and they're like in maid outfits i don't get that in my animes i don't know are you caught up on my hero academia i'm so many 
many seasons behind. You need to just sit there and watch Every it. Every time I say I'm going to watch it, don't. Mm-hmm. And then another season comes out. I'm going to spoil yeah. just a tiny bit. Uh, please spoil away. Deku, his costume, it's like a battle damage one. He's wearing the mask. He has a yellow cape from another character again. Not going to ruin things for you. He looks sick and he's got all these powers and he's kind of acting like Batman and he has spider sense. So like if something is going wrong, he knows. And like, he's just like, okay, got to go there and just like darts off and goes and saves somebody. You got to catch up. Yeah, I'll watch that at some point. So now are you ready for the rumors to close this episode? Let's hear it. Shang-Chi is rumored to have multiple Kang variants in his movie. Okay. Tom Holland might show up in Spider-Verse 2 next to an animated Miles Morales. Okay. You ready for the third one? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Side kicks are on sale for 15% off on sidekicksupplies.com. Thanks 15. Panelist podcast. Hey, what's going on guys? It's us. That's right. We're back again with another episode of Panelist Podcast. <laughs> You're like that actor who thinks he's still Elvis. No. Panelist Podcast. This is Panelist Podcast with Kyle and Bizarro Kyle. That's me. I'm a <laughs> little pig man. <laughs> <laughs> did you just infer that I'm a pig? <laughs> is no, that no, what you no. just did? The Bizarro version of you. Like a pig world. So it's opposite. Yeah think you're treading I... very close <laughs> <laughs> panelist podcast i saw the nothing tail. over there i saw the tail no i just heard them know. she sneezed she I heard sneezed it. dog I heard sneezed it. now she's right here <laughs> oh, no, now she's on... what are you doing and... no right. it's not well, time for this panelist podcast with kyle pierre and leia yeah leia understand it's a special dog episode where sound quality we have our dogs are here no nope. panelist podcast so lazarus La- oh no i messed up ah <laughs>